Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I have one of these spiral wishing well things. You drop a coin into it, and as you can see, the coin spirals around. <laughs> Much fun. But, you might have already noticed, something I've always wanted to dump down one of these is mercury. So I've got a few pounds of liquid mercury here. Let's uh, take those coins back out so they don't get ruined. And let's see what happens when we pour mercury into this thing. I'm gonna try to pour it down the coin ramp. See if this works. Okay, it doesn't spin for very long. Let's take that ramp out of there. Let's try it. <laughs> okay, well, that was interesting. Seemed to work better with the ramps. Let's keep that mercury back up. It sprays the mercury everywhere, don't it? Okay, that was relatively interesting. Uh, one thing that I noticed is that the blobs of metal as they go down into the uh, steep part of the funnel actually get stretched out and uh, will break into multiple pieces. It's uh, the spaghettification that you see when matter falls into a black hole. Of course, mercury is a lot more stretchy than the coin is, so you can actually see it. However, I don't feel like this was uh, all that exciting. You know, this thing's just too small. Let's go get a bigger one. All right, so this is the biggest one that I could get. It's about uh, three feet in diameter. I don't have a launch ramp uh, for this one, at least not yet, but I should be able to throw the coin at an angle. Uh, let's see what happens with this larger funnel. Clearly, I need some practice. <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. You can see the orbital precession a little bit. There we go. <laughs> see, you'll notice with this bigger one, the coins rotate for much longer. It's because they've got farther to fall and much more potential energy to bleed off. See, the energy is lost uh, through uh, the deformation of the plastic and the sound that's being released, you know, everything's going into heat and eventually it loses enough energy that it spirals right down the hole. It can't uh, support itself with the centrifugal force. Okay, so I've set up a piece of metal that I can run the mercury down. And hopefully that gets it into a spiral. Okay, here it goes. It seems to just pour straight through. Let's try to give it a bit more of an angle here to work with. It appears that there's just too much friction between the mercury and the plastic. The mercury is just getting so much drag that it just falls straight down. So maybe the problem is the droplets are too small. Let's see if I can uh, put a little bit more through all at once. 
Okay, that seems to help. Okay. So I got another cup of mercury. Let's put it all through at once. Okay, that was interesting. <laughs> Clearly the key here is more mercury. <laughs> Here, let's see what happens if I just dump the flask into it. <laughs> Alright, I gotta see that on high speed. bottom of the flask. There it is. All right, well, that was decently interesting. The mercury did go around a few times, spiraled inwards. You could see the spaghettification. You know, it looked just like matter going into a black hole, which is exactly what I wanted. Unfortunately, the mercury doesn't uh, roll around quite as well as a coin does because, well, a coin's rolling. It's got very little friction. Rolling friction is much less than the sliding friction the mercury had. This means that the mercury lost its uh, tangential velocity very rapidly and more or less just dropped straight down the hole, especially for the smaller droplets which have more surface area uh, relative to their mass. Still, it was interesting enough, I think uh, at some point I'm going to make a fountain out of this. You have some uh, pumps uh, pumping the mercury up out of a basin, you know, running it around and recycling it through. I think that'll look very awesome, uh, but that's a project for another day. I think at some point I would like to make a fountain out of this uh, funnel here. You know, have some jets uh, shooting mercury in from the side and then a pump down in the sump to recycle it up through. You know, have a little enclosure around it so the mercury doesn't splash out or evaporate. I think that'd be really awesome, but that's a project for another time. Uh, that's all I got for now, so hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. So I'd real quick uh, like to address something which plagues the comment section of these videos, and that is that uh, people think that the mercury is going to kill me. And, well, Obviously it hasn't yet, and that's because the mercury I'm working with is not the organic mercury. It's uh, metallic mercury, which is far less toxic. It's kind of like saying that graphite is poisonous because the carbon in it, when combined with nitrogen, forms cyanide. Uh, this is true, but it's kind of difficult to combine it with nitrogen. So normally the graphite is not going to be harmful at all. Mercury is the same way. Except, uh, of course, you combine it with uh, uh, methyl groups. Still, the mercury vapor does get absorbed into the body and it'll be converted into organic forms, which is toxic. But you'll notice that I'm working outside in the cold and I try to uh, spread out my exposures. The uh, half-life of mercury in the body is on the order of a few weeks to months. Compare that to lead, which is just as toxic as mercury, but it binds to your bones and therefore has a half-life on the order of several years. So much more cumulative. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with the rest of the high-speed footage. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.